Unlike my usual format of going by order of events, this review is mostly going to highlight the reveals hinted at in the chapter title and what it could mean for chapter 999. Either way, feel inclined to press that subscribe button and bell notification for One Piece content delivered straight to your YouTube feed. But this is my thoughts on and review for One Piece chapter 998 Ancient Types. Now Christmas must have come early this year because we got all the fruits of the Toby Ropo revealed and some of the community actually managed to guess them ahead of time, some earlier than others. And if you were one to guess the three new fruits, give yourselves a good pat on the back. Personally, I was only able to predict Sasaki and who's who, as I kept thinking that Black Maria's trap was based on a smile user under command as opposed to her own fruit, so props to everyone who immediately thought Black Maria and wasn't as skeptical as I was for literally no reason at all. Like, what the fuck was I thinking? <sighs> and speaking of Black Maria, though, I honestly do love her fruit and design, although the name is nearly impossible for me to pronounce. I'm sorry, I'm gonna butcher the fuck out of it if I try the full name. But nonetheless, it's a great one and it's oddly specific. Very oddly specific. Specific enough for trivia to be listed. In fact, even the One Piece wiki had it listed. And I'm going to quote it directly. Well, aside from the name, I'm going to butcher that. The Rosa Miguel were believed to have caught food by remaining in their habitat and laying their webs to trap animals coming near it rather than going out and actively hunting prey. This resembles Black Maria's behavior shown so far, where she elected to remain in a room in Kaido's fortress and captured Sanji when he entered it, rather than actively hunting Kaido's enemies. Now, honestly, that couldn't be any truer, and if her behavior is well known through the crew, that may be why Kaido and the All-Stars just let her do as she pleased. And right now, what she pleases is making Sanji her pet. Which unsurprisingly has Sanji in as much of a mental bind as he is bound physically. Priorities? Nah, it'll be fine. Plus, this honestly only makes the dynamic between the two even more enjoyable for now. Now, Sasaki's fruit was definitely on the more predictable side, but I definitely love the design and how his body just matches his hat it's just the cutest little hat I can't, i'm sorry not exactly sure how he can use the sword that was teased two chapters ago but a robot versus triceratops fight is just the kind of matchup we need to stand out at the moment you know make all the fights feel distinct and memorable and as for who's who his fruit had to be the most predictable but Oda more than makes up for it by the way he draws the room when the reveal happens. And that's even before we get into the whole cat versus fishman dynamic. I haven't actually seen any reviews for the chapter yet, strangely enough. But then again, the chapter did just release less than two hours ago, so... Mm. But I hope someone else, you know, notices that, because that's actually pretty funny. It's almost as funny as, say, a cat versus dog thing, but... You know, we've had that been going on since so, so we don't need more of that. But ancient saber tooth tiger versus fish man whale shark. Prime time. Better than Mayweather versus McGregor? See, that's how little I watch MMA. That's, just, that's, that's the most I could think of. And that wasn't even MMA. I think that was a boxing fight. I digress! And I, I really love the aspect that Jimbei might have crossed paths with Who's Who back when he was a warlord. And speaking of those titles, I love how Jimbei just dismisses his former status for his current role as the helmsman of the Straw Hat crew. The dedication Jimbei shows is always top tier. That's why even his former crew is like, dude, just get the fuck out of here. Go be a Straw Hat. It's your dream, man. 
you've given so much and you just want to be on that crew more than anything and it shows it really really shows and it even shows in the gag of Jimbei and Luffy presuming that Sanji is doing the same as Jimbei by holding back a powerful opponent on the floor which technically speaking he's not not doing but given her personality it's not like she was going to chase after them anyway but nonetheless it's priceless it's it's just beautiful and despite the mistaken context Luffy's quote does show that Sanji's specialization in observation hockey, which we do know is part of how he went there regardless, it shows that that is something that Luffy still needs to achieve outside of Future Sight, you know, going into the whole specialization. It's like a skill tree if you've ever played any type of RPG-like video game. So... You could have a tree just for observation hockey, but you could go one way in observation, which would be future side, another way just just up in your basic specs to the maximum. Honestly, it kind of like World Seekers, although that one was still kind of shit. I still need to finish World Seeker. Maybe I'll do that. But either way, just top tier as usual. Now, as for the Isoni predicament, it seems that Marco's fruit has played a role in holding back the spread long enough for Chopper to make antibodies, while all the samurai can fully focus on holding back any enemies without worry. And with Drake staying behind as the main muscle, you know, finishing off a poo for the time being at the very least, but also showing that a poo was not 100% one-shot by Zoro and does have the possibility to come back, maybe leave the Beast Pirates and team up with Kaido, or just live on to see another day regardless. But with Drake staying behind, Marco can focus on taking the rest of the crew to Kaido, barring any interference from Queen and King. Now, I would mention more of Marco's fruit in depth, but I want to go more in depth on a separate video schedule for the holiday break upcoming, so keep an eye out for that. But before we move on to the last part, I do want to briefly mention we did get confirmation that Hihi Maru did somehow hold off page one and ulti long enough to put distance between them and Usopp and Nami, but not long enough for them to give up the chase. So fingers crossed for a round two and rest up, Hihi Maru. You seem, you got fucked up, but he's alive. So yay, yay. Now, lastly, we find Yamato tending to Shinobu's wounds in a storage room, holding a broken dragon statue. Now, the way the scene plays out nearly hints at a flashback detailing Ace and Yamato's backstory together, but the timing is way too close to chapter 1000. And personally, I think we need at least two to three chapters to fully detail those events, as they should also at least partially encompass when Tama meets Ace as well. Still, it leaves me wondering, what could chapter 999 be focused on? Maybe the Ace backstory, maybe Luffy reaching Kaido, maybe Kaido finishing up clearing out the half-dead scabbards before Luffy gets up there meeting Big Mom. Who knows, and maybe that's on purpose, to make chapter 1000 a lot less predictable. Once again, a solid chapter, and there is no break next week. What do you all think of the chapter and the possibilities of 999? Let me know in the comments down below, and don't forget to leave a like on the video, as all engagement does help the channel out. And expect an update video on the channel detailing my plans for the holiday break and when to expect my coverage for chapter 1000. And when I mean my plans, I mean my upload plans, because I do have a few discussions that I kind of just want to bang, 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 put out in you know, back to back succession. Not like an advent calendar type thing, but just a few more videos per week just for the holiday season. So I've been Smalls of Black Knight Anime and Manga. Till next time, stay safe.